Okay, we are back. The uh, this is the new O-ring. Actually, there uh, these things can be actually trickier than the than the inserts than the bead locks themselves. As far as getting these new O-rings to sit down in here, it can be real tricky because they uh, they tend to be stretchy just enough like a rubber band in order to fit here. But there's not much depth to the channel, so there's not much there to actually hold it in place. Um, so that's that's one of the reasons why they recommend the the, the Vaseline just to kind of help it. It's a little stick here and helps it stay in the channel because not only do you have the issue with it staying in here, we're going to flip it upside down. So you've got gravity working against you too in order to uh, assemble here. So we want to make sure during this process, this is kind of critical, you want to make sure that A, this stays in the channel and B, once you flip it and you go to reassemble and you're actually cranking down and torquing the bolts down, it has happened. I had it happen during the last assembly where one of these things managed to pop loose right at the very uh, last minute came out of the channel up against one of these bolts, which was enough to actually keep the rims separated by slide them out, but it's going to keep your, uh, your rims from actually sealing up and they're going to leak air. So this is an um, important part of the process here. Again, this is your, your valve stem here. So you want to line that up to where it's going to be. we got an air hole here and an air hole here. It doesn't matter which one. Just pick one. You just got to make sure that it does line up. Try not to bounce this too much. Again, just to keep that Keep that O-ring in place. And we're going to line the valve stem up with our air hole over here. Like so. And you can see, even if I were to <coughs> jump on this thing, as you can tell your lower bolts don't stick up far enough to actually be able to reach to start a nut on them and that's the whole purpose of these this triangle these three starter bolts if you can get a nut going on these torque them down to where it'll pull the two pieces together and then you can start and torque down the rest of the nuts so let's go ahead and grab our bolts or our nuts rather and these these nuts, it's actually a double nut in one here. It's got a separate piece. And this just adds, once you torque them down, adds to the, uh, the uniqueness of these wheels because I've never had to actually retorque these after I assemble them. So it helps to keep these nuts locked down where they're supposed to be and prevent them from coming loose. Easiest way with a split like that to actually put these on is to use take your 19 millimeter socket, just kind of pop it into there. And manually start it down on your first starter bolt. start out and we'll work, work our way in a, in a star pattern, but you're going to start out torquing these bolts to 60 pounds, 60 foot pounds, all the way all the way around, but in a star pattern, and then uh, once everything's been torqued to 60, then the set, repeat the same process at 80 foot pounds to complete everything and pull it together. So, but initially in order to just get this started, you're going to want to torque these things down enough to where you can get the other, uh, other nuts started. I like doing this by hand. Uh, mostly just because it's it is torque specific, and when you're using the impact wrench, it's you're, you're not getting a, a specific torque rating. So I want to make sure it's not over torquing. So I'm going to do all these by hand. So I am going to pause for now. I'll go ahead and get this assembled at least the initial stage, and then I'll come back.